How you guys doing? I'm Josh Maloney. We're here at Dean Guitars. I'm going to give you a custom, one-of-a-kind, virtual tour through our Dean USA custom wood shops. We use a lot of hardwoods, both exotic and indigenous to the United States. Uh, we use African mahogany, Honduran mahogany, uh, African ebony. We use French rosewood, Indian rosewood. We use a lot of different types of wood. Um, and everything starts out of these, these big blanks that you see here. Uh, usually in 10 to 12 foot boards, we buy huge board feet of lumber you know, every month so we have enough in stock to do exactly what we need to do. A lot of it, a lot of the stuff that you see here is very rough cut mahogany, maple, flame, you know, curl, all kinds of different things. So the indigenous woods to the states though are all the maples. Um, flame maple, curly maple, bird's eye maple, like on the, uh, the Vinnie Moore signature guitar. Um, also some alder, we're starting to use some ash, some different things. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, and, and start this process as huge chunks of lumber and we're gonna go through it step by step to see how it goes from literally a rough piece of lumber to a finished beautiful instrument that sounds and looks killer. So we're gonna go inside now and check out the shop, all the machinery, meet some of the guys, and give you guys a really up close and personal look at how we do things on a day-to-day -day basis here. Here we are inside the wood shop, and what we're looking at now is our, one of our CNC machines. We have two, um, and there's a, a, a ton of great advantages about having CNC machinery. Um, one is consistency, piece by piece, they're, they're almost identical. There's no variance from one guitar to the next if you're using the CNC machine in a run of guitars. Um, the other thing is speed and efficiency. This machine literally does the job in a quarter of the time it would take multiple workers to do. Um, it's, a great, it's a great tool to have because we can set four or five or six necks on this particular machine and walk away while it mills the back of the neck, the headstock, the fingerboard, and this machine literally does every function. You can see there's numerous bits that are on the machine, and this machine is, is electric and it's pneumatic. So the bits are changed pneumatically, the machine runs on electricity. Um, and the great thing is, it can radius a fingerboard, it can slot frets, it can uh, nip the end frets, it can trim binding, it can cut out the headstock shape, it can shape the back of the neck. This machine can literally do it all. If you notice, there's no clamps on our CNC machinery. Everything that we make is held down by vacuum. This is a huge vacuum table. And these jigs that you see that are called spoil boards, we actually made those on the mill as well. So this machine, every movement that this machine makes, has to be commanded to make. So you can, you can certainly imagine it's a, it's a very detailed process and one decimal point in the wrong spot or one number wrong, it, it definitely causes problems. So this is a really integral piece of the wood shop back here. Um, as you can see, what it's doing now is it's actually planing down a fingerboard and making it flat and then it'll go back and re-radius it. At any given time, the CNC machine has six to eight bits in it depending on what we're running. So. Once this is done on the fingerboard, we can literally flip the neck and do the back of the neck shape, uh, really mill it down, kind of rough mill it. The necks go on and off the mill three or four times between fretting and inlay work, which this machine does as well. It'll cut the negative in the fingerboard for the inlays, and then we can also cut the positive material to inlay in the fingerboard. So this machine can do bodies, it can cut you know, pick guards if you need it, it can really do anything. So you can really see how this is a, a super important piece of machinery here in the custom shop. Basically what we're seeing here now is, is our brand new CNC machine. Um, it's, it's much more efficient and much faster. can do a lot of different processes that our old machine can't do. Uh, what we're doing now is we have a body blank laid up on the spoil board and we're going to cut a body blank. I believe this one's going to be an ML. Uh, what it does is, it's, right now it's doing the holes for the tailpiece. 
Uh, it'll literally do everything. It'll do the neck pocket route, the pickup route, the electronics cavity, everything that, that needs to be done in order to move to the next process of having the neck glued on and then eventually going into finish sanding. It works with this on the same principles as a last CNC machine. Here at Dean Guitars, we have some of the finest skilled craftsmen in the business, the best in the business, a total kick-ass crew, man. They get in, they bust ass, they get it done, and we're going to meet some of those guys today. One of those guys is Mike Burgess, and uh, he does all of our inlay work, whether it's um, you know a 40th anniversary Leslie West guitar with his signature in it, uh, you know Michael Amott V, any, 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 any inlays, or a mahogany guitar, no matter what it is, Mike's the man to go to. He's our go-to guy for that. So what's happened now is, this has come off the mill, and the fingerboard's been radius, the fret slots have been cut, all that was done on the mill. Uh, you can see it's still in, in, in essentially neck blank form. It's still very blocky. So what Mike will do is he'll set the inlays in. This one happens to be getting pearl dots. He gets the inlays set, he glues them in, and then he'll go back and re-radius the, re -radius the neck to knock everything down flush so that the inlays are flat with the fingerboard. And Mike does quite a few necks in a day, so he's, he's very skilled at it, he's very efficient. Here we have another very important part of the Dean Guitars Custom Shop team, Louis Cross. How you doing, brother? I'm good. How you doing? Brother? I'm all right. He does a lot of stuff around here. Uh, he primarily does some finish sanding. Uh, he, he does a lot of our detail work, uh, blending in neck heels, neck body joints, that kind of stuff. A very, a very important part of what goes on back here. He's also going to show you how we use some different sanding tools in the shop, uh, oscillating spindle sander, uh, DA hand sanders, that kind of stuff, and some little custom tools uh, these guys have kind of made over the years. Um, it's a really, really interesting process to watch, and it's probably between finish sanding and fairing in the necks, and one of the most important jobs in the shop. He prepares all of our guitars to be painted, which is very, very important because if he doesn't do what he needs to do properly and we apply paint on an unprepared guitar, then we have to start the process all over again. You guys have seen some of the processes that we've done here today. And basically what I have is two of the same guitar in various stages. This one you can see, once the neck has been cut on the mill, the frets have been put in, the neck's been radius, the inlays have been put in, the neck has been rough cut, the truss rod's done, all that stuff's finished. Then comes the part where you have to glue on the neck. And as you can see here, this one is joined and has been glued on. We use clamps and old wood blocks, old school style. We usually write the times on them so we know when they were glued up, so we know when they're going to be ready for finish sanding. Um, here's an example of a guitar that's had the neck glued on. It's gone through finish sanding, as you can see, 
everything's been fared in nice and smooth. You can definitely see the transition from the other guitar to this. All the mill work has been done. This has been sanded and ready to go to paint. So what the last step that we'll have to do is we have to assign it a serial number. When we assign it a serial number, then it officially becomes a production guitar, ready to go to paint, and then be assembled in USA assembly, which you'll also see. So you can see there's, there's a bunch of various steps to get from the raw lumber to what you see here and ready to go out for paint. Hi, I'm Pat Baker. We're here at the Dean Guitars facility in Tampa, Florida. I engineer all the pickups for our, our USA pickup line. And uh, right here we have uh, one of our winding machines. Uh, we have This is one of four of them. They're state-of-the-art computer-controlled uh, winding machines. I wanted to show a few of the different models we do. This happens to be the uh, Vinnie Moore Shredhead. I worked closely with Vinnie to uh, design this pickup. You know, this pickup, we designed it to be like, a, uh, like an old PAF, but with more output. It has, it has a little bit more gain than your typical PAF pickup. Another pickup that we designed was uh, the Michael Shanker pickup. This one's in white and black. He's known for the white and black guitars. And uh, he uses this pickup in his, uh, his signature V guitars. And here's our Leslie West pickup. Um, he likes the satin covers. This one actually has a satin nickel cover on it. We uh, overwound this pickup to get the output he wanted. And uh, he uses it in his signature model. Uh, Leslie West guitar. Here we have the Michelangelo Badio Hands Without Shadows pickup. He uses this in his neck position and he's one of the most amazing players I've ever seen in my life. It's got a really nice mid-range to it but it's still articulate and clean even though it's really hot. Michael uses the Hands Without Shadows in all his signature model guitars. This one right here I designed for myself. It's called the uh, Pat Baker Baker Act. It's uh, my signature pickup. This pickup right here, it sings. It gets great overtones. This is uh, some of the wire we use to wind our pickups. It's uh, insulated copper wire, which means it has a coating on it. This wire is extremely thin. It's like thinner than a human hair. When we set our winding machines, it's very important that we, you know, we dial them in. We have tensioners on the winding machines so that if the wire winds tight enough but does not break at the same time. Hello everybody, I am Spider Z Prime. When the guitars come from Woodshop, as you've seen earlier in the video, they come to me looking like this. I make sure, as well as the guys in the Woodshop, that everything is pretty much spot on. And I'll send this out to paint, and the exact same guitar as we send to paint, this is what it looks like when it comes back from paint. As you can see, very well painted. I make sure that everything is up to specs, right color to serial number, right type of paint job. What we'll do is we'll take various grinding bits and a whole bunch of other stuff and drill out these holes so that the hardware fits in them without cracking the finish or anything along that line. We'll tape off a lot of the guitar so we can do the fret level. Now what we use is fret level checked against a backlight, out wrench here, hit the truss rod, come back through here, make sure it's basically okay as straight as possible before we hit it with the fret level. Then we'll take what we call a long block and we'll hit this a couple times just to straighten out any high points that might be in the fret. We just hit along the lines of this a couple times. And what that does is levels it to as straight as possible. We've also got a few more fine tuning tools other than the long block such as fret file if we need to hit any high ends or anything along that line. And then check it again with the straight edge, we'll go back with a crowning tool. This takes that flat spot, rounds it back out. After all that, we'll go through, install hardware, electronics, bridge, and jack plate, all the plates, all the other good stuff. Exact same guitar, ML, you'll get something like this. However, it doesn't stop there. What we do is each individual bridge is hand filed. The nut is filed down so that the spacing is just perfect. Um, set the truss rod so that there's little to no bow. Set the uh, action, then set the intonation. So once that's all done, 
you're left with the finished product. This is a, uh, one of the new uh, prototype racer MLs going on here, and that's the various stages.